Welcome to City on a Hill Gaming, a 5th edition Dungeons & Dragons actual play podcast. Let's meet our players. Hi, I'm Grant, and I'm playing Trather Wimblin, a human fighter. Hi, I'm Jenny, and I'm going to be playing John Abermere, a crimson-born human. Peter, Bertrand Greystone, Dwarven Forge Cleric. William R. Ericocro Magi. Daniel, I am playing Vatten. I am a half-elf ranger. Hi, my name is Ben, and I am Twig, uh, or Shem. I am a rogue bard and a uh, goliath. We hope you enjoy our episode. Uh, John. Yeah, Lizard so... Friends. Uh, I have a 30-foot move speed, so I go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6... And then I Misty Step! Uh-oh. <laughs> as a bonus action, right here! Okay. I'm going to shock and grasp its face. Okay. <laughs> I have lots um, of concerns. Go for it. <laughs> uh, yes, yeah, so a lightning springs from my hand, and I do shock and grasp. John That's goes, a nine. John goes full Emperor Palpatine <laughs> and misses. Yep. Is, I forgot it says bzz. Yeah. That's my favorite. Okay. <laughs> Shim. Glancing over the the edge, do I? Does the other one still like looking alive down at the, the one that he got looks pushed off? Dazed. You don't think he'll do anything this turn? Uh, and actually, okay. on, let me let me do this because I should have done this. Jenny, roll mm -hmm. that a second time. Since this one is distracted, he should be easier to hit. Oh, okay. Since Ben since Ben dancing lights Tim last turn. Forgot about that actually. That's eighteen. There eighteen you go. is better than nine. Eighteen is definitely more that's, than nine. It's, All right, it's it's literally good. double. Yeah, rocking grass. That's four lightning damage. You just did it. Uh, yeah, first level. Okay. Uh, goes... it's, it's a cantrip. I can't really uh, level oh, it up oh. too much. I forget that was a cantrip. Yeah, next okay. level cantrip damage goes up. Yeah. Oh, nice. Okay. Yes, Ben. He he down there. He dazed. He no move this turn. Okay. Uh, then he'll move over to Shim. We'll move over to three. Okay. And with the benefits of the dancing lights, we'll go for the rapier attack, which might be a 17. Okay, that's enough. Uh, so that is uh, nine piercing and three sneak attack. So wow. a total of 12. Um, and then with a bonus action... Uh, I will uh, give Bertrand a Bardic Inspiration. Excellent. Okay. Oh, I didn't even use the... Uh, yeah, 17 worked anyways. I didn't, I didn't use the Bless. Oh, didn't All use good. the Bless. Yeah, yeah, no, you're good. You're good there. <laughs> um, yeah, so that's... Uh, so Bertrand gets the Bardic Inspiration. That's a D6. <clears throat> Okay, Excellent. and it's Bertrand's turn. All right, so um, Bertrand is going to just try and do the, the tail thing. Okay. So, 23 Ooh, hit? Yes. <laughs> uh, 12 bludgeoning damage. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're good. Okay. You're no longer T grappled. <laughs> T tail, uh, tail let go, Greg tail, fall down the mountain. Tail let go. Uh, Greg no fall down the mountain. He still holds on to the side. Oh, but I, 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 I missed a great opportunity for a line. I was going to say, oh, you left something and kick his tail down after Slip. him. But no, no, he doesn't. He doesn't fall, but he does. <laughs> he does let go of you unintentionally. <laughs> it was One his... tail free Greg. OK, it <laughs> is not his plan. But boy, is he no longer hanging on to you. <laughs> Kabonk. Kabonk. Um, yeah, Kabonk indeed. <laughs> um, good night, nurse. Okay, uh, so it's actually the Grek's turn. Um, he seems very upset. That was kind of rude. Um, he's gonna try and bite you now. Blech. That was his favorite tail. That was his favorite tail. That was his best tail. Uh, well, you know, you try. You know, you're you invade people's personal space without their permission, and these things happen, Mister Grek. That was his mountain climbing tail. He just. <clears throat> 
got that back from the dry cleaners. <laughs> Have 20... you guys watched Kipo and the Age of Wonder tale. Beasts? Uh, uh, like... We've watched a lot of it, and it's delightful. Because yeah, like like this is giving me very what is Kipo and the Wonder Beasts vibes. Right? Kipo and the Kipo... Age of Wonder Beasts. It's by the same studio, uh, DreamWorks Animation, that did Voltron. Yeah. Uh, K I P O. Thank you. It's really good. Basically, mm -hmm. imagine Fallout, okay. but <laughs> where instead of instead of coming out of the vault and going, "Wow, what a terrible world," uh, Kipo comes out of the vault and goes, "Everything is cuddly, and I have to hug it." Oh, that seems. Yeah. <laughs> I have zero objections to that. There, it, there's a it lot of plot friendly. going on. It's super cute. There's, you know, there's yeah. a a antagonist who is kind of scary. Okay, Peter, you take seven bite damage. Okay, yep, yeah, that 24 is definitely going to hit me, so. And uh, so Greg number two has now regained his ability to move around, but cannot do so till next turn because he fell real far. And Greg number three, I believe, has been electrocuted, magic missiled, <laughs> and twinkling lights, and I think stabbed. He seems upset. <laughs> oh, how the mighty have fallen. Yeah, a little bit. <laughs> um, Jenny, where are we yeah. at with an 11? I said that I real confidently. Okay. I, I tried to be confident and didn't Ooh. work out as well as I'd hoped. Armor class 12. I kind of thought so, actually. <laughs> wasn't that far. But he definitely doesn't have advantage of any kind right now. <laughs> no. He's got all the disadvantage yeah, at the does. moment. <laughs> uh, Grant, it's Trather's turn. <laughs> okay. Uh, it looks like Grick number one, who was grappling Bertram, uh, it looks like he's partway on the path, right? Yes, he is partway on the path, partway on the mountain. All right. So can't really uh -oh. shove him off quite as easily. It turns out I did not need to use the action surge ability that fighters have <laughs> because my shield master feats let me, uh, lets me shove with my shield as a bonus action. <laughs> really? Oh, yeah. no. That's dope. Okay. Yeah, I'm going to go ahead and let it be spent because, you know, whatever. Fair no enough. take backs. But um, that doesn't mean I'm not going to, you know maliciously take advantage of it this turn if at all yeah, possible that's totally fine all right so i'm gonna go ahead and uh swing at this particular uh grek next to bertrand and i okay how's a 20 sure that's that's fine sweet so I mean, you're technically gonna... flanking if you want to roll twice no we're good uh 11 yep, good. damage <laughs> and then i'm gonna go ahead and use a distracting strike with okay. that one um, run, run, that does three run, additional run, run, run. damage, and okay. the next attack roll against it has a uh, has a um, has advantage. Oh, okay, that seems that seems good. And then I'm going to move over here next to Shem. I believe okay. that's Shem. Yes. Uh, and then I'm going to use that bonus action to try and shove this guy off the ledge with my shield. Oh no! With athletics. <laughs> okay. That's a net twenty. <laughs> I mean, I'll roll to see if I also get a nat 20. No, no, I do not. Wow. Sweet. He falls. Um, roll me roll, roll me six six of those d6s, please, Grant. Oh, wait. Yeah, actually, he'll fall about that far, too. 24. <laughs> <laughs> That's a lot of good die. He's fine. Everybody's, There's a couple of good dice in there. Everyone's fine. He's, yep. Mm. He's conscious. <clears throat> Loosely he has wrecked the Grek. <laughs> yes. <clears throat> he yeah yeah. Okay, uh, Jimmy. Oh. Oh, yeah, and stay down, please. That's a bonus action. <laughs> yeah, right, I know I can't use a bonus action as a free action. Free action. Blah, blah, blah. You can a free action. Yeah, yeah. Terms they have meaning. Jenny, your turn. Yes. Yes. Um. So they're down at the bottom, right? Yes. And then there's the one next to Bertrand. Um, that With. is no longer grappling him. And yes, correct. And no longer has um, a tail. Let's uh, do a quick little swoop over here so I can actually properly see it. And uh, for overkill fun, let's do chromatic orb. Okay. Crimson Did or a particular that? kind of damage. That's an attack roll, isn't it? It is. Uh, oh, yeah. Because I... of my distracting strike, you have advantage on the yes, attack. Yes, she does. Cool, cool. Uh, that's advantage. Um, so yeah, I am deciding what damage I want to do, and I'd like to do crimson. Okay, crimson away. That's fifteen. Is that to hit or is that damage? To hit. Uh, I think so. Actually, yes. Okay. 
And uh, I am not rolling advantage on damage. That would be ridiculous. Let... I kind of like that idea. <laughs> That's wow. 17, though. How did I do that? That's uh, you rolled a That's 6, 3D4, 8. and a 7 on 3d8. That's 3d8. He looks I forgot terrible. it was 3d8. I thought mm -hmm. it was 2d8. The Greg is not in good shape. Uh, I in the words of Bertrand, he looks like a wreck. <laughs> One that mending will... This is not a fixable with mending issue. No, this would require spells that he's not going to get the benefit of because nope. he's trying to eat us. Correct. Ben. <laughs> there are sure some Grex. Yeah. Sort of here. <laughs> okay. The one that just got orbed was the uh, number one? Yes, the one over one over by Bertrand. Yes. He just got okay. orbed. orbed uh, did... Shim will reach, uh, will kind of look over, uh, pull out his pan flute, uh, and cast Sleep by playing a nice little melody. Uh, lullaby on okay. number three. Uh, the one that's down on the ground. Yeah, I get 90 feet away. Okay. Uh, uh, he's... Hopefully he has less than 19 hit points. He does. Nap Beautiful. time. I'm assuming the other one has more than enough to uh, yes. not fall asleep. Correct. Yeah, it's like uh, oh, right, right, because uh, it's a cone or whatever, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Um, and yeah, the then... Bonus action. Stand there. Okay. Bonus action used. Bertrand. Since this Grek doesn't seem to be getting the hint, I'm going to bonk him again. Okay. Uh, 14 hit? No. Dang it. I'm going to attempt to bonk him again. <laughs> you attempt to bonk him again. He would not. <clears throat> he does not appreciate being bonked. I'm probably still somewhat like wrapped up in his tail, a even though bit, it's yes. no longer attached to him. Yeah. Of, yeah, there's just tails. Do you have bardic inspiration? <clears throat> oh yeah, I should roll that, and I should also roll bless because that's also let's let's see if um, that combination gets me. Uh, it should have all the modifiers. It definitely yeah. will. <laughs> <laughs> all right, I'll start with bless and see if that gets me anywhere. It will. <laughs> missed by the old missed by one. He definitely yeah. missed by one. <laughs> All right, <laughs> that that's now a seventeen and seven points of blood. He didn't damage. miss by anything. <laughs> yeah, at my table we have a really bad habit of getting monsters down to one hit point, and at this point I just oh my yes. <laughs> yeah, at this point it's just all right. One is Jenny, zero. Tell me why you did that last hit point of damage. And I was just yeah. so mad. I was just yeah. so mad. <laughs> It's it's become a real thing. Yeah, the, uh, it's, it's it's a table meme. It and really we're just is. Assume number three is out of this fight because he is asleep and has three hit points. Um, and unlike in Pokemon games, when you go to sleep, you don't regain health here because he did not use rest. And then there's some kind it of was joke not about, super effective. There's huh? some kind of joke about belly drum and then bodies. I don't know. There's there's a whole thing we could do there. It's not a great move set. Um. Now I want to play Pokemon. Okay, sorry, I'm back. Um, so Greg number two is conscious again, and he would like to bite a Trather. I. This sounds great. A Eleven. No. He said real assuredly. Okay, cool. <laughs> That's kind of what I figured, but you know, optimistic. We'll go with it. Trather, it's also your turn. Oh, good. Um, There's a Greg I pull there. out a Pokeball and try and capture the Trico. Okay, um, so... <laughs> No, there's um, a system for this. If you want me to go there, <laughs> it has its own game, not licensed by Nintendo. So don't. I mean, you can podcast it. People do, but it's fine. Definitely not licensed by Nintendo. Uh, you know what? I'll just go ahead and uh, hit this one real hard. Okay, hit hit him real hard. Man, eh, ten's actually gonna miss. Fifteen? Ooh, maybe. <gasps> hey, there we go. It beats okay. me. He hangs on. Let feet kick in. William. There's one one Greg left. Yeah, let's go with the trend and try to shove him back down the hill. I'll okay. Just move right here. Okay. Yep. And just a uh, normal D20, I guess. It's an athletics check. Yes. Oh, okay. So you would uh, like to push him. Yeah. Oh, <clears throat> well. And he'll make an opposed athletics check to not be pushed. Yeah, athletics or acrobatics, acrobatics technically. Yeah. Well, one. negative one versus four. Can I do acrobatics? Nope. Not for pushing him. Okay. You could, like, maybe trip him if he was, like, somewhere else, but not like that. 
Okay. If you want to look I'm it up, it's uh, right at the end of page 195 on the player's handbook. Ooh. Oh, shoot. Well, sorry. That's okay. That's okay. Uh, why don't you... I'm sure that uh, won't work. But... You could firebolt him or something. Uh, I mean, I just rolled for it. Okay, that's fine. Uh, so... you, well, I mean, technically, he can roll less. Yeah. No, he's good. <laughs> he's He's fine. He's figured out this pushing thing, and he doesn't appreciate it. <laughs> John. I did say shock and grasp again the second that Ryan said it, and it was very uncanny. Perfect. Um, so, yeah, shock and grasp, and... Yes, definitely hits. Seven Yay. For damage. Okay. Z ben, it is Shim's turn. Uh, bonus action, slide the dancing lights over to his face. Okay. Uh, you guys now have advantage. And rolling, uh, attacking with the rapier again. Okay. Stabby, stabby. That's yes. a 24. Yeah, it is. Crit! <laughs> uh, that is... Uh, oh, how they do this. 18 uh, damage. Yeah. Yeah. We're fine. I promise. Uh, well, the double the... Sneak attack also, right? Oh, yeah. Well, well, I think it, all it, it rolled it down twice. there. Yeah. Oh, yeah, it did. Yeah, it did. Yep. <clears throat> yep. 18. Yeah. He's fine, I promise. Bertrand. He's fine, I promise. Um, I guess... Uh, oh, let's see here. I haven't cast this yet, this campaign. Uh, Bertrand um, uh -oh. cast Spiritual Weapon and oh. this... Glowing hammer appears in the air and takes okay. a swipe at the uh, the Grek. Swipe away. 19? Yes. 10 damage. Perfect. <clears throat> Come on, go. Come on, go. No more Grek. <laughs> okay. Um, Beric walks up. Well, that was interesting. Aggressive group you got there. Bertrand kind of looks at him and he's like, like I said, when we introduced ourselves, we're pretty good at making sure that we and those with us stay safe. I'm impressed. Eurosi walks over, pokes Melee in the shoulder, points for her to follow her. They walk over. Yoroshi picks up like one half of the tail and points for Melee to pick up the other half. Melee looks very confused. Um, <laughs> and she's like, pick, now you get the other. Okay. And then they carry it back to one of the carts. We can sell this later. Tail barbecue. Yes. Also, the leather's yeah. really expensive. Hmm. Uh, that's leather. the first time I've used. Uh, How sleep. expensive I exactly? <laughs> um, I mean, if we, you know, we get it clean and stuff. I don't know, twenty gold for the Marvelous. hide off of one tail. Her shoes ready to go. <laughs> Not what I expected to happen. All right. Perfect. <clears throat> Rather Wumlin fashion plate. <laughs> Accurate. <laughs> Trap always on point. Yep. <laughs> Side of a mountain or otherwise. Uh, what were you saying, Ben? Hey, uh, uh, that's the first time I've used uh, sleep, so we might want to hurry because I don't know how long he's going to be out. He's fine. I wouldn't worry about him too much. He's back in his cave, Snoozy. tucked in. Nappy, <laughs> nappy, 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 nappy. nappy Reasonably time. certain he's not going to uh, try and chase us up by himself, badly hurt. He could be real enterprising, but it seems unlikely to me. All right. <clears throat> and all right. Uh, so Next you guys continue... encounter the Grek, he shows up with an MLM scheme. <laughs> it is. Not that kind of enterprising. No, no. Bad oh. Grek. oh, my bad. My I didn't know what that was, but I figured that was the reference you were making. <laughs> I don't want you to sell me Avon. <laughs> now that's a reference I understood. I don't know why, but I did. I remember the 90s. Yep. Who says 90s? It's Wait, do they, still, do they still sell Avon, really? Oh, yeah. Oh, goodness, yeah. Does someone still drive the pink Cadillac? Oh, yes. Oh, yeah. Really? That's Mary yeah, Kay. Yeah, we saw one of those. Oh, is that on Mary the, Kay? Uh... You're right. That's Mary Kay. Uh, actually, it's not just her. There's. Never mind. Let's continue on. <laughs> <laughs> Let's not go down this particular rabbit hole. Well, certainly not the discussion I expected for tonight, but I mean, we're there. Trust me, there's 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 nothing we actually want to see at the bottom of this rabbit hole. Hold on, I need to find out if anyone does a Mary Kay podcast. <laughs> huh. 
Okay. I'm, I'm sure somebody does. <laughs> There's got to be. Oh, there is. Yeah, there actually definitely is. Huh. Interesting. All right. So you guys continue up the side of the mountain. Uh, you have no more distractions. And as you as you get up, it's probably late afternoon. And you see in the distance uh, a large gate. And it's interesting. One half of the gate is secured into the mountain. And the other half of the gate, there's nothing on the other side of it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it just drops off a sheer cliff. That is side of the gate. Huh. Uh, and there's one watchtower. Yeah. And uh, an orc looks down on you. Hi. Uh, oh. Yeah, Beric. All right. Well, then. Uh, that's fine, then, I guess. Who's this lot? Uh, Beric's like, they, they came to see, uh, came to see Hawk. Oh. Right, well, then. All right, very well. Get on in here. We come with you, assume it's fine. Uh, okay, so you guys approach a, you approach a city. Uh, sitting kind of in the side of a cliff, and there's like little plateaus and houses that st- you know sort of stick out of the side, and they're built kind of on the slopes or actually straight up in the rock wall. As you look around, you kind of go through town, and it's almost entirely orcs and it's orcs and half orcs. That's basically all you see. Uh, Barrick leads you up to a marketplace, points to the caravan. Uh, he nods to Yerosi, and she kind of takes the caravan and leads it into the marketplace. To uh, and she starts stopping. You can you kind of notice her. She goes. She stops at different vendors and drops things off, and then someone hands her gold and she keeps going. All right, come on. And he takes you up through the winding path of the town. There's a lot of orcs. Um, they look a little confused to see you, but everyone seems to recognize Barrick. No one seems to really question him moving around freely. And you get to a point where you come to a slightly larger house. And when I say slightly, I mean very slightly. It doesn't really distinctly look different from the others. It's got a very simple path that leads up to it. It's made of simple stone. There's a very small fenced-in area on the side with cows. I may or may not have been watching Minecraft videos recently, so that's where the cow thing came from. Um, watching a lot of Minecraft recently. And, yeah. He's like, all right, well. I'll go Hello. introduce you at the door, but, uh, yeah, you're here. This is it. Thank you, my good man. She keeps it simple. She does. He walks Much up and knocks, him. and someone you hear someone mumble something in Orcish, and he says something, and there's a slight pause, and then a Warforged opens the door. Uh, Warforged, you recognize. Warforged, you have seen the different times you've seen the Talon, the Hawk's personal guard. Right. Uh, her name is Him. H-Y-M-N. Uh, oh. Right, well, we knew you would come eventually. Come in. Come in. Alrighty. Uh, so what you kind of open up to is just kind of a regular house. You see some doors here and there. There's long hallways. There's a dining room over on the side. And she kind of points through the middle one. Thank you, thank you. Trather will uh, lead lead the way in. All right. And as you enter the middle room, uh, you see the hawk and another warforged and another orc, all of whom you've seen before, um, just at different points. Can you see the name tags? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Quill, that took me a while. Zippora and Zippora, yeah. Hawk. hawk. That getting those to work <sighs> properly is apparently a two-layered step I wasn't doing correctly before. Yes, it is. Yeah. I thought you guys had been seeing a lot of name tags. Oh, no, I can't <laughs> see anyone's name tags. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Wait, can you not see each other's name tags? Oh, no. No. Oh, no. hold on. Oh, heavens, no. She looks a little surprised. Oh, wow. Hello. Resourceful. You found a barrack hawk? somewhere, didn't you? We did. Oh, very good. Very Maybe good. Oh, pleasure. Come in, uh, Master Wimlin. Good to see you, as always. A pleasure, as always, Lady Hawk. Uh, okay. Um, here, it's time to get down to it then, isn't it? I believe so, hmm. yes. I was hoping we would have longer. So, uh, I assume Bethany sent you? Indeed. Of course. Okay, well, I assume she went about her business. I assume she will show up when she's ready, or when he is. Interesting. Okay, well... You've seen the, at least parts of the town, I assume, now. This is what we have to work with. 
what do you what what are your thoughts in dealing with our large dragon friend and his army of whatever his army consists of currently it changes He's I flexible have like that few concerns about the army uh, if it's uh, any sort of conventional host uh, the pass is narrow the walls well defended you Position on a cliff makes you secure from that sort of thing. An easily held gate, and as we've seen earlier today, uh, the cliff is our best friend. The dragon, however, is something of a concern. I... No arguments here. It's immune to all of those other things. <laughs> it is. Thankfully, the city seems to be less flammable than I had feared. It is largely stone here, you are correct. It is an advantage. I suspect it will not take long for him to figure out where you are. I mean, he knows where the city is loosely. He's never really had the resources to make an attempt, but I suppose he will at some point. You are welcome to stay here in the intervening time. And, yes, very interesting. Well, um, I tell you what. Make your way. Uh, look around the mountain and the, the village as you wish. If you have any suggestions for specific defensive points or or resources you might think would be of use to us in this purpose uh feel free to let me know i'll uh, i'll see what we can make available um as necessary one of the talon will show you around and uh they'll find and she she points to she nods to zipporah who uh Right, yes, well, I will, uh, I will find you somewhere to stay, as, uh, you may be here for some time. Very interesting. Well. Thank you. Um, okay, so, uh, the, uh, let's see, one of the, another Warforged, or I'm sorry, wait, another orc, excuse me, walks into the room behind you guys. You want me to go out? Uh, Hawk kind of nods. Good. She leaves. Uh, yes, uh, Shrike is one of my scouts. She will uh, set the patrols out, see when they start coming. I assume it will not be long. Excellent. <clears throat> Excellent. Time for a bath, then. Oh. Um, Fresh up, freshen yes. up before battle. Uh, okay, so you guys... I'll let you, that's not what I wanted to copy. Um, I'll let you guys tell me what you want to do next. Okay, so I'm guessing this place is pretty well maintained from the description that we've gotten, so there's not a lot to fix here. No. However, um, Bertrand will probably go around and take a look at, like, fortifications and anything mechanical that they have, like catapults or okay. whatever, and see if there's things that can be done to, um, like, install heavier ropes or springs in a siege engine or like Improve shore up walls with earthworks or you know stuff like that just okay. like basically just enhance everything that he can get his hands on okay um i tell you what do because i know you can always use mending for things like this um give sure. me some kind of skill check to go with it as well Oh, I'll let you, I'll let you tell for... me what, or or some kind of uh, like if you have proficiency with a certain set of tools you want to use. Um, I mean, I'm thinking insight here. Um, okay. It's, okay. Okay. Sure. He, sure. He's using that to kind of look around and see what's kind of less than obvious that could be done to benefit us. So. Okay. I like it. Yeah. Go for it. Twenty-one I... insight. Um. As as Trather mentioned, there is a startling lack of things to do with flying force. I mean, there are some catapults. And um, what are the... Is it Mangonel? Are Mangonels the one that throw rocks? Or like are the larger the giant, one? Or are those yeah. the giant crossbows? Uh, no, that's both, a both throw rocks. Okay, what's the giant crossbow? That's a ballista. Ballista, ballista yes. There are a handful Mangonels of... kind of tend to throw lots of little rocks. Oh, okay, okay, if, okay. I yeah, if I yeah. recall correctly. Yes, that sounds correct. I'm mixing my Age of Empires knowledge. Um, yes, <laughs> there is. there are a series of... Yeah, the giant... What did you say the giant crossbows were? 
Ballista. Ballista. Ballista, that was the word I wanted. Yes, there are a series of those that are not in good shape. That you don't you think they were built probably decades ago and have never been used for anything. Oh, okay. That's so, definitely something that we can get on right away. Just general wear and tear on those makes them not useful right now. There is ammunition, but not much. Okay. And they um, don't seem like they're in great start... shape now. Okay, so two things with that. Um, first of all, go through and like recondition them as much as possible. And then okay. second of all, um, I'll use like my forge domain abilities and stuff to make more. Like, okay, let's let's get some ammunition uh, production going because if we need to shoot down a dragon, this is the best chance we've currently got. Okay. Um, so one of the Warforged points you to sort of a, a stock of timber and steel and iron and, and other resources that you can use for both of those things. Okay. Um, that they just kind of have a building that's full of just construction-ish materials. All right. Um, anyone else want to do anything specific? Well, go after, his, specific? after his bath, Trather will certainly yes. make a round looking at the defenses. Um, you do notice... I mean, obviously there are, are a decent number of watchtowers. There are walls. It is a fortified city with a, you know, not just her personal guard. There is a standing force here ready to defend it as necessary. They seem fairly well trained. Um, but this is certainly... The numbers are not in your favor, at least currently. Uh -huh. You would think. Um, okay, I tell you what. So as you're walking around town, Trather... Um... One of the Warforge, uh, Quill, comes up to you. There's someone who wants to meet you. You specifically. Oh, well. The, the, uh, of course I can always make time for... The local commander has any questions. Sort of ah, someone excellent. Someone with your, your level of experience. Marvelous, marvelous. Fellow uh, of good sense, no doubt. Yes, Qu uh, so Quill takes you across town uh, to what looks to be a small barracks, and inside there's an orc scene at a desk. And when you come, he looks up. Oi. You're the one from up north, then? Uh, yes, that's me. Good. Yeah. So I assume you're familiar with what we're facing, here, eh? To some extent, at least. To some extent, absolutely. Suggestions for the mountain road. We've got our own yeah, things in place, but I've, I have concerns about a force the size we expect. Anything you can do to slow them down, of course, would be ideal. Uh, I assume you have some way to block the road, make it impassable, divide up forces coming up it. We can do some things along those lines, but uh, I'm not sure it's a thing that'll hold against a very large group. How, how much more mountain is there above the city? Uh, I mean, a couple more miles. He goes up. Okay, no, sorry, that was out of character. Oh, I apologize. Out of, uh, um, you're about 55 or 60% of the way up. It gets much steeper and much thinner the further up you go. You do have a natural advantage, you know. You have a mountain just sitting there, right for the flanking from. Anything coming up the road, uh, and I assume there's little chance of coming up from any other direction. Correct. Anything coming up that road will be naturally focusing on your city. If you can get anything up higher, archers, uh, siege engines, anything like that, you'll be mm. able to rain down destruction up, uh, from a rather natural vantage point, and that will give us uh, additionally certain uh, vantage points against other uh, obstacles we might encounter as well. So he, he walks over to the window, pull, kind of motions you over. Hey, so up there... Uh... There's an old, old house. No one lives up there anymore. And he, you notice it's probably three or four hundred yards further up. Mm -hmm. And sort of in the opposite direction your route came from. So it's sort of above the road, just before right. the gate. Yeah, that's exactly what it we're might be something you can do with that, yeah. Yeah, see a perfect command post. You'll be, uh, be able to see them coming a little further down the, uh, the road as well. Always good. Yeah, but good. more to the point, uh, they'll have real trouble getting up through here uh the majority of the army this high up will be struggling you'll be able to wind them easily we're feeling it a little bit ourselves of course uh but you know a small group making its way up the mountain can rest relax recharge a full-size army 
trying to work its way up a narrow road like this, they can't wait. They'll have to spend all their energy getting up here simply to allow the rest of the troops to get up behind them. You can't camp in enemy territory uh, where you can easily be uh, ambushed and picked, up, uh, picked apart here and there on the mountainside. They'll have to make a rush for it, which means they'll be winded. Hmm. Very good. I like that. I like that. Yes. All right. I'll uh, get some of my some of the group up there. See if we can't set up something. Timmy takes down some of those trees. Maybe drop it on them if we need to. Yes. Do that. And of course, anything we can do to harry and harass on the way up uh, the hills. <sighs> Not my preferred style of fighting, well. but in you know when confronting a larger army with a smaller, anything you can do to make it a fair fight is ideal. All right. Hey. hey uh... Wait, I'll, I'll spend more time with him just working out things. Details on the specifics. Okay. Good, good. Um, okay. <laughs> Find the largest rock you can and just push it down onto push the Push the rock. next largest, down, down, down. then the next, then the next. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> push, push, push. Put the, put the biggest ones at the top so that it gets harder to get them out of the way the further up you get and the more tired you are. I'm not even going to avoid the Battle of Endor references. I'm just going <laughs> to lean into them. <laughs> Just, you know, dropping logs on things. <laughs> yeah. Sure, sure. I mean, I'm, I'm be a little concerned if we have ATSTs coming in, but... I, yeah, I, mean, I mean, hey, like he's the, inventive. The, the double log ATST cockpit sandwich is fine. It's a classic. <sighs> we can use that again. Yes, you can. I mean, look, the property the dragon it's comes from... Ewoks, it's good enough for us. ...is owned by the same company the Ewoks are, so it's fine. <laughs> it's only double dipping a little bit. That's um, true, that's true. Okay, uh, Jenny, William, or Ben. Is there anything you guys want to do in town? Uh, hmm. not in particular. Okay, that I can think of. Uh, you see, you see, Barrick kind of continuing to mill around. He's done setting up all the supplies, and he looks. He looks like he's looking out in the distance, off the side of the mountain, like down like at something but it's like he's, he, he can't exactly see it but you're pretty sure he's looking f at something in the distance that he's not expecting uh everyone i tell you what um jenny make me a perception check okay because you see you see barrick and barrick sure does see something Ooh, natural That's 20s, that 20 22 okay so you walk over next to him and he's near the edge of the cliff uh, and John kind of gazes out over the desert, you know, sort of down from the mountain, and you see two things. Uh, one, you see a lot of dust moving your direction. Large, large cloud, like something long and wide and rather sizable is moving towards the mountain. Not like one thing, but like in a, in a group of things mm -hmm. are moving this direction. This other thing you see... Um, is moving much more quickly and it's moving through the air but not like flying moving through the air like shooting towards you through the air oh and it's okay, large like... and black and maybe like roughly stone in texture okay so it's very similar to the um um not golems yes the, golems the obsidian shards the okay oh. the the obsidian shards the guy in the desert used to throw at you guys with words written on them Oh, it looks like those, but you're pretty sure there's something different about this one. Okay, um, I'm getting away from wherever it's landing. Uh, it's headed towards the edge of the cliffside, like just shy of the lip. Okay, I'm backing up. Okay, so, and it kind of comes shooting, and it, you guys all hear it coming. It makes sort of a, a sound as it pushes through the air and juts into the side of the stone of the mountain really aggressively. And it crashes into the side of the mountain. And up the side of the cliff, sort of down under this path here, a dark black creature climbs up. I'm actually going to put you guys a little further back so you're not quite so close to it. Um, this is sort of how my roads are. And you can order, you can sort of loosely see it peeking its head over the, the rim of the the cliff and it pushes both arms up and just kind of climbs up to the top of the edge and just stares at you it appears to be made of obsidian 
I'll wave at it. <laughs> Hail and well met. What's up? It just kind of stares also, at you. Dibs. <laughs> it doesn't really make any sounds. Uh, but it will keep moving forward unless you do anything to it. You're going to need to stop there. <clears throat> Are we all in agreement that this is probably from that army? Uh-huh. Yeah. Marvelous. Uh, Trather will charge on in? Okay. Um, Shimmel we'll flank to the side. I tell you what, I'll give you guys all one move action, and then we'll roll initiative. So, Shim, if you want to flank around, and then if the other three of you want to move, and then, if you will, each roll initiative for me. I'm fine where I'm at. Okay. Uh, and anyone who wants to make survival checks or nature, go for it. That sure, sure is a creature. <laughs> sure it is. I'm not sure it is. <laughs> it might be. It might not be. That is an 18 nature and a 17 initiative. Okay. For sure. Right. Initiative, yes. Ooh, I did real good on initiative, I promise. Yeah, I got a 10. Good enough. Okay, and then... Uh, nature first. Nature first. Okay, so 19 initiative. Okay, so once initiative starts, William William definitely goes first. Would we have had time to take a short rest while we were in town? Yes. Yeah, you guys are back at full, full everything. Because this would be the next day. After your, yeah. your fun entanglement with the Grex. They seem friendly. Um, next day. Got it. Okay. Yes, next day. So you're back at next all... Next day after Grex Day? Yes, after Grex Day. <laughs> it, was a one, it was once upon a Grex Day. Uh, okay, so Ben and William. You've heard of... I mean, you guys have seen golems. You've seen golems recently. Um, you've heard of giant creatures made of elements and stone and obsidian this sure could be a thing it looks a little weird to you not like a regular golem like i don't know there's something about it that looks like it comes apart for some reason it's uh, made of legos <laughs> yes don't step on it it'll hurt real bad um it's a decepticon <laughs> dun, 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 dun. Copyright infringement. Okay. Um, As someone who actually owns a piece of obsidian, I can say stepping on it does hurt real bad. It doesn't oh, yeah. sound fun. It's not fun. It's very sharp. Yeah, it certainly looks very sharp. He is a sharp boy. Step, and... but I can kind of look at it and think, I don't want to. No, no. Hard pass. It's our turn. Just go for it, I guess. Go for it. Let's just go with Magic Missile again. Okay. Uh, first or second level? Okay. Let's just go second. 13. Uh, no. Well, it's, oh, wait, that's just damage. Uh, yeah. Magic Missile. Yeah, that yeah. just does damage. Yes, uh, he takes 13 uh, force damage, I believe. Mm-hmm. Ben, yep. Jim's turn. Yeah. Um... Golemy things. Let it worked so well last time. Okay. Uh, let's go with the dancing lights again. Okay, sure. And uh, right in its face, around its face area, assuming humanoid shaping and not too glittery. Sure. Uh, yeah. And then, uh, so the brown, uh, the brown on the map is vertical. Um, or, the yeah. brown on the map under the path is vertical. Above the path okay. is, is not necessarily as much, so. Okay. Cool. Um, I think I'm actually cool where I'm at, though. So, yeah, I'll just, yeah, stay there. Okay. Uh, and the dancing lights. Grant. In the face. Yeah. Um, what size category is this thing? Uh, you guys are medium. He is large. Okay. I believe I can try and shove that, but let me double check. Hello, Goblin Queen. Yeah. <laughs> she yeah. just tried. She just tried to step on my leg and missed, and almost fell off the chair. She's oh, standing. Oh, no. <laughs> oh dear. Also, I'm real tempted to say that since this thing does appear to come apart, can I use my disarming attack? Uh -huh. Oh, I know, right? All oh, right. Uh, Ten almost certainly won't hit. So, uh, no. Yeah. Cool. I'm gonna try and shove it with the shield. Just, okay. Just, just for fun. 
Uh, no, eleven probably won't do anything. No. Cool. All right. Well, Trather feels largely useless and stands. Bertrand. All right. <clears throat> I'm gonna go all primary spellcaster on this thing. Okay. Um, Thank you. Uh, first spell is going to be Sacred Flame. <laughs> Five. No. <laughs> so it takes uh, 1d8 of radiant damage, which for some reason isn't showing up here. So let me just roll that real quick. Not because it's the spell card. Yeah. Okay. So four points of radiant damage. Okay. <clears throat> and then um, Spiritual Weapon is a bonus action. Yes, so... it is. I'll pop that out there. Okay. Uh, unfortunately, that was only a 10, so that, that misses. probably will not hit. But, hey, it's there for next time. Yes. Jenny. All right. I'm thinking chromatic orb of um, um, uh, uh, force damage. Okay. Sure. Do a thing. Yes, that hits. Yeah, the 21 hits, and damage is 11. Okay. I would be worried if 21 didn't hit. So would we. <laughs> It'll be fine, I promise. His turn. Uh, so he kind of clambers up a little bit. And he will try and slam into the Trather. Cool. Whip 11. No. I kind of <laughs> figured, but you know. Okay. Does that miss you by what, like, Long 11 points don't worry. or something like just, that? Just don't worry about it. It's plenty. <laughs> William, it's our Forget turn. about it. <laughs> Is he standing still then, just to be clear? Yes. Okay, cool. You did said he moved a little, so I wanted to be sure that wasn't just narrative. That way, he's kind of back. Oh, he's all the way on the hill now. I thought about moving him, and I'm like, wait a minute, it's Trather. That'll be a mistake. He'll just fall down the cliff next. I know <laughs> how this works. He shall be moved. <laughs> yeah, he, oh, he will be eventually. I'm sure of it. So most of my attacks say that whoever's within five feet is also in the line of fire. So if you put and... it like behind him like a square, it'll still hit him, but not them. Yeah, like that. Well, so I understood them to be within five feet of the oh. creature. Good news. Case? He's 10 feet by 10 feet. So yes. throw it at his, <laughs> uh, throw it at his okay. butt and you'll be fine. Okay. Yeah, the, you, can, you can kind of make the spacing work like that. Um, okay, so it still explodes. Mm -hmm. uh, then he yeah. needs to make a dexterity saving throw, which he's real good at, I'm sure. Um, <laughs> yeah, he did so good against my cantrip. 13, <clears throat> actually. Uh, he has to meter equal, and it is 13. For, for William. Okay, so he makes the saving throw. So he takes no cold damage. Wow. Is it uh, save for half or save to avoid? Save to avoid. Okay. Usually it's save for half. That's interesting. Oh, wait. Hold on. You have advantage because Ben did Dancing Lights. Which means Trather also had advantage. Yeah. Okay. I mean, I'm not going to say no. Yep. <laughs> uh, does that mean that Bertrand the, also the had advantage? The spiritual weapon also has advantage. Had a, had a 12. There you go. Uh, yeah. So, so William, roll that, that D20 plus 5 again. Okay. And yeah, Bertrand, uh, <laughs> roll the roll the spiritual weapon again. Uh, so sixteen misses, and then we'll we'll spiritual weapon punchy. Yes, that hits. All right. Um. So that is one d eight plus my spellcasting modifier, I believe. Let me. Uh, let's just roll it. There we go. Ten. Okay. So. When you hit it, when the spiritual weapon hits it, um, it kind of shatters. Hmm. The, and the weapon or the creature? The creature. And it splits apart into two smaller ones. Oh, no. And they both look upset. But it's Shim's turn. Uh, <laughs> split the dancing lights. Okay. To each of them, because it's four, four orbs... Two each. Strobe effect. Okay. And then... Coming up to this... Well, actually, let's see. I was there. 5, 10, 15, 20. Oh, that was one section. Never mind. Okay. So, yeah. Hitting there. So, coming in close, and... Uh, do I still get advantage with the lights? Yes. Beautiful. 
Um, and that is the rapier cane. That is 23. Yes, that definitely oh. hits. And uh, six points okay. of piercing sneaky damage. Okay, so when you hit that one, now there's two. So now you have three of them total. Yeah. Uh, Trether. There's Come less on. size now. Excellent. I'm going to try and hit the uh, the small one here with my sword. Okay. That's a nine. No. no. Okay. Rolling real well. Do I still have advantage on these, by the way? You do. Yes, absolutely. Oh, okay. Well, then let's try that again. A ten. Technically. <laughs> Technically better. Uh, and then I am going to try and uh, shove the other, the bigger one back off said cliff. Okay. Shove away. Uh, it can only move it five feet. Is that enough? Uh, yeah, that's fine. Okay. Seven. Uh, I had to get the oven in sometime tonight. Six. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> Certainly okay. not as strong as its fuller size version. So, uh, yeah, it uh, it goes back five feet, whatever that means. Okay, roll 66. Well, I mean, if you insist. Okay, so 24. Okay, so it hits a small ledge. It splits into two, and then those two shatter. Neat. Yes. Uh, Bertrand, there's two small ones now, for some reason. Okay, well, <clears throat> to quote Doc Holliday, I've got two spells, one for each of you. <laughs> so we're going to do Sacred Flame on the one that's uh, closer to us. Okay. Uh uh, he makes a deck saving throw. I'm sure they'll be good. Yeah. Well, he's smaller, faster. I mean, that's that's how this works. Right, 11. Yeah, no, that's not going to be That's not 14. how it works. Okay. <laughs> Max damage, eight points. Uh, that one shatters, but not into smaller pieces, like into just dust. Okay, into regular actual. smaller pieces. Into reg <laughs> yes, into actual smaller pieces. All right, and now spiritual weapon. Okay. No, uh, 11 misses. <laughs> John. So I got some questions about the way my flex work. Okay. Can I make a spell both? No, you know what? We're only dealing with one dude now, right? Correct. Uh -huh. I don't need to do area damage anymore. Okay. Uh, let's, uh, let's just, you know, I hang on a second. Let me do some more math. One, two, three, four, five, six. Yes. Shock and grasp. Okay, uh, but future reference, still send me a PM with that question, because it okay. never hurts for you uh, to actually answer that. Uh, heck, and can, it can be answered real quick. Can I make a spell with my meta magic both careful and distant if I spend two flex? I'd have to look at how I wrote that. I can't remember if you can spend more than one at a time. You can definitely spend more than one at a time, because I believe you can do... Oh man, uh, I'm working with a, a similar mechanic in one of my other games, and the way that it works with that character is that uh, the more points he spends, I, I believe he can he can make a spell bigger and then differently bigger because he can spend okay. as many points as he needs to in a turn. <laughs> okay, um... but I'm not sure if that's specific to like a feat he has or or what. We'll have to look into it. I'm not going to say yeah. yes. I'm not going to say no. Okay. So yeah. Um, it's shock and grasp time. Okay. That's yes. 23. 23 definitely hits. That's two damage. <laughs> He's fine. <laughs> He's fine, I promise. Okay. He's going to try and slam into Jenny. Uh, natural 20. Ooh. I, I, I be shoved and hurt. Uh, okay, so we'll double whatever this rolls. <laughs> He'll you shove you right 12. back into the cleric. <laughs> yes. He he rams into you, and you take 12. Cool. You guys take care of it. It's fine. He has five hit points left. This is, I think, the first time that John has gotten seriously hurt. That was actually a pretty healthy amount of your hit points, if I'm not mistaken. That was over half my hit points. Was it really? Good. It night. was really. You guys need to go to level five. We're going to do that in between <laughs> sessions. You guys need more hit points for whatever's next. Okay, so... I mean, to be fair... This is how I, I picture that. Like, this thing smacks John, 
and John like reels backwards and Bertrand just kind of sticks a hand up and like John runs into the healing hand. <laughs> like all of John's wounds just immediately close. <laughs> <laughs> he looks disappointed. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I know. So um, uh to be to be fair regarding my hit points, I rolled a nat one on oh, my no. hit points roll last time, I believe. So like you went John real weak for his level. I'm thinking of maybe just using the average next time. That's also uh, fine. That nat one really hurt. Yeah, well, but I own my nat ones. I appreciate that. I respect. I that. roll with them. But I'm, <laughs> oh. I'm upset. Welcome. Okay, <laughs> so you guys, uh, the hawk calls you. Kind of comes out, sees what happened, looks concerned, calls you back to the house. You guys come back to the house, and now standing in the house is your friend Bethely. Hey. One of the deep elves Hello. from some time ago in that weird cave, and one of the Jedit, the giant cat people. We've come there. to help. But Excellent. Things, I guess. Uh, she looks around. Well, this has been most interesting. Uh, How did you get up here without going past us? Minor details. You know what? You are you're all friendly and trustworthy. I'm not going to question it. I'm sure. I'm going to question fine. it as somebody who's been involved in the defensive planning. <laughs> uh, yes. So, uh, well, yes. Uh, not an answer. Wait, sorry. Say it again. I got I got, dist- I got distracted. This is Bethely. Did you think you're going to get a straight <laughs> answer out are, of her? Answers are minor are, are minor details with her. Sorry. Say say your question again, Grant. Uh, said, you know, don't worry about it. I said, I'm going to worry about it as one of the people involved in planning the defenses. I am also here to plan defenses. Relax. But yes, I, um, don't worry about how I move around. It's complicated. It's, uh, besides, there's like a lot more of them. I'm surprised you didn't see us come up. You look out the side, the window, and there's like 12 or 15 deep elves and like 30 cat people. And they probably came up largely while you were fighting the, the golem thing. Just kind of very sneakily, because, you know, cats. They just kind of come and go as they please. Um, yes, well, uh, yeah, we came up the mountain mountain pass just, uh, before the army got here at the bottom. They're at the bottom, by the way. Yes, yes, we oh, saw. It will, good. It will take them some time <laughs> to get that kind of force up here, but they will. Um, and, uh, of course, the large floating one that throws rocks at people is leading them. He's always fun. I'm sure that oh, won't lovely. be bad. But uh, I'm sure that's uh, that's not for now. It looks like uh, you've all had a very interesting encounter with whatever that was. I've not even seen that before. Oh, wait. Oh, that. Yeah, it splits into smaller ones. Those are annoying. Yeah. Mm. yeah yes. I... Uh, yeah, interesting. We will come back to that at a different time, I suppose. The hawk kind of nods her agreement. Yes, well. Yes. Seems we have some planning to do. And we are going to stop here, actually. Um... So thank you guys for joining me. Uh, Peter. Yeah. All right. So um, Grant, Jenny, and I are also the hosts of a podcast called Saving the Game. We are an RPG analysis and applied theology podcast. Um, we we tackle role-playing topics from a Christian perspective. And uh, we've been at it for about seven and a half years. You can find uh, links to all of our episodes, uh, the blog post that I've been writing for most of that time, and our lovely Discord community, all at stgcast.org. Excellent. And we are on social media at Saving the Game, um, Twitter and Facebook, and uh, Grant does a bit with Reddit for us too, but I'm, I think he just uses his personal account for that, right, Grant? Oh, yeah. Okay. And you guys <clears throat> yeah, are still so... working through the alignment series most recently, yes? Yep, we're going to be doing True Neutral next. We... Uh, we decided to um, to go down like the law chaos axis instead of the good evil one, so we wouldn't just be progressively hitting worse and worse people as we went through. <laughs> um, <clears throat> so we've done uh, the first four. We've done lawful good, lawful neutral, lawful evil, and neutral good. And uh, tomorrow, as we're recording this, we're going to be recording true neutral. Oh, so. okay. Very cool. So yeah, go check them out. Uh, also on Patreon, if I'm not mistaken. Mm-hmm. Uh, you can find us at City on Hill Gaming uh, or over at Patreon.com. Thanks for listening to City on the Hill Gaming. For more information, you can find us online at CityOnTheHillGaming.com. 
email us at cityonthehillgaming at gmail.com or find us on Twitter at City on a Hill Game. For more information on saving the game, you can find Peter, Grant, and Jenny at stgcast.org or at Saving the Game on Twitter. Thanks, and have a blessed day.